Hello again, I am Jim Bob, and welcome back to Lone Oak Farm. It's uh, day three of winter, it's kind of D-Day for selling our crops, and I've been paying attention to the market prices over the last 24 hours or so. Uh, as you can see at the moment, we don't really have a stellar price for our wheat. It's not a bad price, 838, but it's, it's not great, and I'd like to think that that might go up a little bit. Uh, as far as Lone Wolf goes, I'm, I'm hopeful that that's definitely going to go up at 785. Uh, and you can see that we have uh, some movement on canola now. Lone Wolf is a decent price, but not a great price at 1337. And Agri XJS is going up right now, as you can see. It's in a, a bad place at the moment at 1247, but it is on the increase. And we look at our corn prices as well corn is the other crop that we'll be selling today and you can see that we have a 906 price agri xjs which isn't too bad but i think it can go higher and i think it can go higher because lone wolf was in the uh, the high 800s it was in the 890s as its sort of default level and that's now going up so i think at some point hopefully today the uh, agri xjs price will go up as well which is great because we have 280,000 liters so we're going to need to double tip at each of those locations and and uh, if that means we leave a little bit left over we have like 20,000 liters or so left over until next summer i'm i'm happy to do that and do a double tip at one location and then do a double tip at the other location we'll get a lot of cash and then we can wait until the summer when the crop comes good again for selling and get rid of that last little bit then or we could just hang on to it until we sell our next batch of corn you know we have options uh, so I've just got to kind of play the waiting game at the moment really the, the crops are ready so to speak it's just waiting for those prices to to go through if we take a look at the predictions you can see this is you know by far and away supposed to be the best day for wheat um you can see there the barley <laughs> that huge spike yesterday that's because of that great demand and it's kind of crashed the market as a result you know the price uh, as soon as that demand finished caused the rest of the price you know caused you know the base price to plummet and it's there's a knock on effect um today as a result so this should actually probably be a little bit higher but it's actually quite a bit lower than yesterday's price uh, with canola again you can see we're kind of at that peak with canola we're just waiting for those crops to come good and then corn as with last year day three head and shoulders is uh, above the, the other prices or the other days is the best day to sell so yeah we just got to kind of hang around and play the waiting game until those are done really now I did realize pretty much as soon as I got back to the house last, uh, you know, yesterday afternoon I went inside I went to uh, go and put a big screen on and realised that <laughs> I'd left my mixer at the uh, at the farm uh, sorry at the store so I had to go back and collect that but it is now here as you can see our uh, Silo King Prestige uh, this is the modded version from Arm Team so this is a 32,000 litre capacity as opposed to the regular one in game which only has a 13,000 litre capacity considerably smaller uh, so let's take a quick look at our animal page you can see almost out of grass now once that's gone that's it until the grass starts growing again in spring and hopefully we'll get some grass on day three maybe day two if we're really lucky actually yeah, sorry day one if we're lucky we'll have to wait and see um, straw is burning through really quickly don't forget we filled that up on day one with six bales of straw and and look how little is left already um and you know our, our power food mix is kind of burning through a little bit as well so we've got a little bit of tidying up to do so while we're waiting we're going to um tidy the cows up a bit and then we might even make up a batch of tmr as well we have uh, like i said we have plenty of time to kill while we're waiting for those markets to uh to come good so we might as well okay so uh, I have uh, 
given the cows uh, a couple of bales of straw, given them three bales of straw, that's uh, got their bar mostly filled, but not all the way up. Uh, and I've also... Uh, actually, I don't want those to be over there, do I? I need to be over here. Uh, I have also uh, tidied up their food trough as well. So, once again, they're spitting out hay as opposed to grass. So it must just be a, a seasonal thing. Maybe they don't spit out grass in winter because grass doesn't exist in winter uh, as a, you know, as a resource. So that's why they're spitting out hay. Interesting little, uh, interesting little thing I never really noticed before. So. going to grab uh, another stack of three bales after this as well. What we're going to do is mix up uh, a whole batch of TMR and stick it in the shed. Uh, we will probably still make our TMR in, in big batches, but this will just give us a nice sort of backup supply uh, if we need it for whatever reason. You know, we just want to top their levels up a little bit and then uh, we'll have a pre-made supply that we can just shovel in there rather than having to mess around with uh, breaking out the mixer and going through the rigmarole of making a full batch. So there we go, that should be enough. Now we're just basically going to be doubling the mix that we used last time out. So we used a, a ratio of three silage bales to one hay bale. Now obviously we don't have any silage bales left uh, anymore. We've used them all up finally so we have to uh, make sure that the straw sorry the hay goes in first now obviously we're doubling the mix ratio so that's two bales of hay now to the equivalent of six bales of silage but when you're using loose commodities you know it's very hard to get exact figures it's very easy to overfill or underfill um, so whenever you're doing loose stuff it's always best you know to work the smaller commodity first because that's going to be the more problematic one so the mix for silage that we're using is 75 percent to 25 percent now if we went ahead and we put in a little bit too much silage then we can't get a full bale in but if we did it the other way around if we were doing a lots and lots of hay and a little bit of loose silage uh, so six bales of, straw, uh, of hay for example and, and then the equivalent of two bales of, uh, of silage if we put all, all six bales of, uh, of hay in, first of all, that's fine. That's our 75% ratio. But because we'd be using loose silage, there's no guarantee that we'd be able to get a full two bales worth, you know, 8,000 litres of silage into the tank because the bucket is fiddly and th finickety when it comes to actually picking up, you know, exactly what it's supposed to carry. So a bucket that's supposed to carry 4,000 litres might only carry 3,996, for example, or 3,984. You see it all the time with manure, with silage, and any other commodity that you've got that you a loose version of. So in situations like that, it's always best, when you have a potential mishmash, it's always best to do the small quantity first. Get that out of the way so you know that you're not going to underfill and break the mix. So for us, that's the uh, that's the hay. We get the hay done first, and now we could just chug in the silage, and it doesn't matter if we don't get quite enough because at least we're not going under 25% mix on the hay, which is the important thing. Go. so now we just basically need to chug away and uh, fill this you can see our counter going up there and there it is all being churned into the back of the tank and once we get uh, 
a bit more in there the mix color should change in fact, I'm surprised it hasn't changed already if I'm honest Checking, I did actually drop the bales in and not around the back, <laughs> around the side. Yeah, they're in there. Maybe it's waiting until we finish filling, until we get that change in texture, but... Yeah, that's, that's looking a bit dark. That's looking just like silage and, and nothing else. Not quite sure what's going on here. Let me pull up the help menu. Well, there we go. We have... A legitimate mix there. Don't tell me this one has to have straw in it. I'm pretty sure it doesn't. I'm sure we've done it loose like this before. But that texture looks the wrong colour. That looks too that looks too dark. experiment here because I'm I say I'm a little concerned that maybe I might have screwed this mix up somehow or maybe I just wasn't paying attention and didn't see the color change so uh, what I've done to enable a good distribution of crop you know uh, of product inside the shed is actually put a conveyor belt so we'll be dumping onto that um, but I'm going to test dump just here and if we have to shovel this on later, then we'll shovel it on later. Um, so, let's unload here. I want to see if this spits it out in constituent parts. No, it's keeping the mix look. So that is actually TMR. It just, for some reason, the colour looked wrong. Very odd. Oh well, at least we know for next time. Whoops. So, let's do that again then. <laughs> we'll get that shoveled in onto the belt, but let's let's make our next batch. So I need uh, another two bales. Watch this from the uh, from the start this time, so I can see that colour change. It's difficult as well with the sun. Oh, that actually does look a lot darker like that. I think. Yeah, yeah, I saw it change. Ah, okay. So it's not just the texture inside that changes, it's also the texture of what's going into the bucket that changes. That's what was throwing me, because the texture colour was the same coming out of the chute at the top as it was inside the bucket. I wasn't expecting to see it like that, so... Now I know. Now I know why I got confused.
You would not want to walk into one of those, would you? That would just... Uh, that would be fatal. It would just rip you to shreds instantly. I mean, look at it. You put your hand in that and it's you, you, you haven't got a hand anymore. <laughs> I wonder how fast that thing does actually spin in terms of uh, RPM. I'm guessing pretty fast. Fast enough to do some serious damage, that's for sure. Almost done. Okay, and there we go. You see, this is what I was talking about when I was talking about the uh, the loose material effect. So you can see there, we haven't got a full capacity. We've only got 31984. We can't put a full 32,000 litres in there because of the way the loose, uh, loose material mechanics work. They're a bit weird at times. So this is what I was saying. When you have this situation where you have a high percentage of one product and a low percentage of the other in your mix, do the low value uh, uh, figure first. Otherwise, you risk, you know, if you're going for a 75%, 25% mix like I use, and you put the 75% in first, and then you go and put the 25% in, if the 25% is bales, you're okay. If it's loose, you're in trouble because you ain't going to get the full 25% in. And it's going to break your ratio. You're going to have to empty everything and start again. All right, we need to get that to unload. Okay. So now we can just unload directly onto the belt. It'll take a little while, it'll be a slow tip process doing it like this because, you know, obviously this would normally speed out at a much faster rate but it's going onto the belt which can only process so much but it does mean that we'll get a nice consistent pile building up in here that should respect the boundaries of the walls and not spill through the sides I think that's where we went wrong the first time when we had a little bit of TMR sticking through is because because of where it was being tipped in, the, you know, the angle and the height. So this will uh, this will give us a nice consistent big pile that we'll be able to then kind of just tweak a little bit by moving the belt um, into different positions to make sure we get a fill. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do this until we've used up all of those hay bales and we've built up a nice full shed of TMR mix just here. Uh, and then hopefully We'll have seen some decent movement on the prices. Let's take a quick look at the market at the moment. Still no movement on AgriXJS. Still no movement on Lone Wolf. The canola price is still in the red. The corn price is going up. It's now 904 at Lone Wolf Grain. Yeah, we'll keep an eye on those. We'll see what happens. Just had a notification that CSZ implements are on sale. We don't need any, but uh, that's a lot of implements. And you can see that it's the same tools over and over and over again. And this is another good opportunity for me to kind of point something out that a few people have been asking me about uh, over the last few episodes or so. Uh, and that is the auto load versions of the CSZ forks. Now, in every category that you go into, you know, that can have forks, you're going to have CSZ stuff, which is why there's so many different versions in there. So uh, you go into low loaders or front loaders here. You've got all your CSZ tools. And, of course, these can still be then configured for, you know, a skid steer, a front loader, a telehandler, and a wheel loader, and the CSZ adapter, you know, if you don't have a three-point or you don't have the right connector. Um, so you can basically then hook them up to a three-point linkage. So there's all those different kind of options there. And it's the same if you go into uh, wheel loaders again. You've got tools in here. So you have CSZ tools popping up in that menu. And in telehandlers, 
there they are again and again in skid steers as well so there's four sets straight away from there but in bailing technology you have a set of uh, the CSZ tools in here as well the ones that apply specifically to bailing so the bail forks basically no buckets no um, no other other things it's just the bail forks but the ones that are in here these are the ones that have the auto load so if you want to have auto load CSZ stacks so ones that either do two round bales or three square bales you need to get them from this category here the bailing technology category of the store otherwise they'll just be regular forks So it's coming up on half past two in the afternoon and we're seeing some movement on prices but we're also seeing some things dropping a little bit or, or just not moving at all either. So you can see uh, we're starting to lose some value on our canola at Lone Wolf. Now we have 186,000 litres uh, so that is three trailers worth. I can carry 130,000 litres or a fraction over 130 with each journey. So that's that's two separate trips effectively. Uh, Agri XJS hasn't moved, Lone Wolf hasn't moved, and I'm starting to get concerned about that. So we're going to go and sell a trailer of wheat at Agri XJS now, because if Lone Wolf doesn't improve, it still gives Agri XJS time to rebound back up to around that value before we make our second. Uh, full tip later on in the evening uh, as far as the corn goes corn is uh, going up quite nicely at Lone Wolf as you can see it's now above Agri XJS so we'll keep watching that that might well be the last one that we sell and uh, we'll probably end up selling uh, our canola at uh, Agri XJS sell it all there uh, we'll see how that goes again I'm keeping an eye on that price so let's get this um, first delivery out of the way so I can carry 65,000 litres and change per trailer. So each trip I should be able to ship 130,500 litres. So I need to det uh, detract you know, uh, that from my total, as you can see. So I need to have around about 60,000 litres in the back of this truck. And that leaves me with 131. That's a little bit too much. There we go. That I can ship. 130,089 litres. That I can ship with two trucks. So uh, we're going to go and take this one over to Agri XJS. And we're going to go and sell this load first of all. Uh, and then we'll just keep an eye on the prices and see what happens uh, with the rest of those... Uh, and here with the rest of the markets. All right, so usual routine in tag the weight bridge. go and now we can go and tip the load let's see how much we make from an almost full trailer this will give us a good kind of indication of how much we can make from our wheat
I'd like to get around 50,000 per trailer if I can. Uh, look at that, 51,239. That's not too bad at all, considering that was 61,000 litres. It wasn't a full trailer. So we should get a, a similar kind of benchmark price. We should get around 50,000 plus per trailer. Just have to wait and see exactly what the markets you know, uh, shape themselves up to be like as the day progresses. So we'll get back to the farm. We'll get the trucks lined up, ready and waiting, and we'll see what's going to go next and where it's going to go. So as you can see, the markets are starting to uh, to stabilise and fluctuate a little bit. AgriXJS, having rebounded, is now <laughs> falling, but Lone Wolf is starting to go up. Uh, AgriXJS for for wheat for canola. AgriXJS has just stabilised at 13.46. So we're going to be going and selling our canola there straight away. Give that time to rebound, and then with corn, you can see that Lone Wolf has just settled at 9.23, and AgriXJS is actually going up. It's 9.29. Now we can do double tips at both locations for our corn, uh, and that'll leave us with around about 20,000 or so left over, which we'll just hang on to until next year, till the summer. And we can either get rid of that in the summer, or we can look at uh, just getting rid of it next winter. We'll see how that goes. Uh, but we are about to do our canola. So let's move the first truck out of the way go let's move over to the second truck get that started to uh, to fill up there we go and let's get our uh, let's get our grain train on the road and go and deliver our canola Okay, Waverage tagged. Swing around. And there we go, we are ready to start the tip. So, there goes the first truck. There goes the second one. Let's see just how much we can make on our canola here. watching that money rocketing up like that. <laughs> it's awesome. That's the first one done. 175,793 dollars. That is a cracking amount of cash. So let's get our two trucks back to the farm. And uh, let's see what we're going to take next and where we're going to take it. So next up is corn and we're going to take the first two trailers of corn over to Lone Wolf Grain. Their price has stabilised at 9.29. It's still going up at AgriXJS. Uh, so uh, we could potentially just try and rush everything to AgriXJS but we're going to cause the price to drop dramatically after 130,000 litres goes through and there's no telling it would rebound higher than it already is at Lone Wolf. Plus 9.29 is still a good price. I mean I think it's I think it's higher than we actually got last year. So it's not a bad price at 9.29 for corn. It's a pretty decent price. We've got 130,000 litres through there. We'll let AgriX shares continue to go up, and when that stabilises, we'll tip the other two trailers. And then, depending on how the market's looking, you know, we may have seen a rebound at, uh, at Lone Wolf. Agri may still be higher than Lone Wolf, despite the tip. So we could potentially just bring the last 20,000 litres over here as well. And then that gives us time 
to potentially bring that last little bit of canola over and also we still have two trailers worth of wheat that we need to get shifted as well don't forget so yeah that's why we're kind of taking this one to market now rather than waiting a little bit longer because we are running out of time we've only got what, just over three and a half hours left before the markets close for the day and the prices will drop across the board tomorrow so we really really want to make sure that everything is done by midnight There's the first truck in. And let's get the second one on the way as well. Yes, the weight recorded. And time to start tipping our corn. So once again, <laughs> because we're tipping two trailers, the money goes up twice as fast. I do like to see it just rocket up like that. It'll slow down when the first trailer finishes. But we are in desperate need of uh, a big payday today because we have absolutely hammered our bank loan. If we take a quick look, actually, you can see, there you go, 1.465 million is our current level of debt. It's not great. <laughs> um, it's still going up, look. It's still going up at AgriXJS. Okay, that's good to see. Uh, 120,568, that's fantastic, and our second tip will be even higher than that because it'll be at a higher price at the other sell point, so we could possibly make, you know, anything up to 130,000 <clears> for the next load, so that's, that's 250 grand for the corn, effectively, uh, that's, that's very nice indeed, very nice indeed. We're putting the last bit of corn through, as you can see. Uh, this is going through at 954 here at Agri XJS. So we're looking at a nice little price here. Uh, as soon as that's done, we'll be whizzing back and we'll be grabbing uh, the wheat and uh, taking that to Lone Wolf. And then hopefully the canola will be uh, about ready to rebound for the final tip that we make. back down at Lone Wolf again so 125,000 that's not too bad that's 245,000 in total for the corn let's get the trucks back to the farm and get loaded up for the next delivery so here we are selling the wheat the last of our wheat here at Lone Wolf Hopefully we can get a nice, good, tidy summer cash for this as well. And then we've got a mad dash back to the farm to stock up on the last bit of canola and then rush that over to, uh, to market as well. There we go, 106,000 litres. Sorry, $106,000 there for our wheat. That's quite nice indeed. So we just have a single trailer that we need to kind of go grab and then bring back as fast as we can. We need to absolutely floor it all the way home. Visibility is absolutely terrible. You know, you can see it started raining. Uh, the fog makes it so hard to see, especially when you're at speed. I'm gonna have to put my full lights on just so I can see where the fields are and where the roads are. That was my turn. Uh, we'll get the next one. It's a mad scramble. Put the map on as well so I can see 
where I need to watch for. Here we go. Here's the turn. So yeah, we have uh, about 20,000 litres of corn. We're going to hang on to that and take another look at selling that in the summer. We just don't have time to worry about messing around with the corn now. And it's not worth the hassle and aggravation of trying to deal with it for just 20,000 litres. As I say, we'll hold on to that until uh, until the summer. And then if it's a good price, we might sell in the summer. If not, we'll, we'll hang on to it and add it to next winter's total. Uh, but now it is time for us to get the last of the canola we'll rush that to market and this has to go back to Agri XJS so that's it 56,000 litres obviously we're not touching the soybeans till the summer uh, because the prices at the moment are terrible <laughs> it's about a thousand dollars per thousand litres that's an awful awful price for soybean Time is ticking on. Oh, we are really up against it time-wise here. This is going to be a mad scramble. We're going to have to just break the speed uh, speed limit, just speed on the uh, on the freeway. Well, not the freeway on the main road. I don't like. I don't mind bombing along on private land, land that we own. But when we're on public roads, I try and stick to the speed limits where I where I can if I remember to. But we're going to have to just throw that out the window this time. We're going to have to just speed like crazy. Otherwise, we're not going to get to, to the sell point in time. <laughs> it's going to hit midnight and the price is going to plummet. It does not help at all that we can't see where we're going. <laughs> it really doesn't help at all. Even with the full brights on, you can see it's still really poor visibility. We can only see just a little tiny way in front of us. We almost look a little bit like uh, like a dragon with two great big wings. It's either side of the, the, uh, the head and the tail. Look at the way those shadows are being cast on the ground there. There's no traffic coming. I didn't see any lights. It looks clear. Respect other road users. We'll have to turn the brights off. Look how bad the visibility is. You just can't see a thing. Well, there's a car in front of us. We're going to have to risk it. Luckily, there was nothing coming in the other direction. <laughs> that could have been disastrous. It's just as well we're using the red truck as well, not the uh, the stealth truck. Can you imagine? You know, just you know that thing suddenly appeared. It, it loomed in your mirrors behind you and scared the life out of you. Well, not that a red truck wouldn't either, but you know, a black truck just looks more intimidating. All right, so tag the Waybridge. We've made it just in time. down now got my tablet on standby to uh, pull up the mobile banking app and transfer all these funds directly into my account and what's our final tally for the day going to be very good isn't it <laughs> it's looking very good 75,871 for that particular trailer a total of 681,865 now some of that is about 20 20 20 to 25,000 of that is milk money I think or leftover from yesterday it's actually it might be as much as 29,000 leftover I honestly can't remember how much we started the day on uh, but it was less than 30 grand. So we take 30 grand off. We've made $650,000 today selling our grains. That is fantastic. So quickly before uh, the, um, the clock hits midnight and we get hit with a loan fee, let's pay that into our account. Oh, 
Oh, we weren't quite quick enough. There we go. So we have $403 on hand, and our loan has been halved effectively. We've just paid $700,000 off our loan. That is awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Whew. And our milk value's gone up as well. We've made 30000 today. So, um, yeah, there we go. Fantastic. Uh, our uh, loan interest, because we didn't quite get it all down, is now 3985 or 3958. Uh, our loan interest has been very high while our loan has been maxed as you can see highest we paid six thousand dollars when we had about 40 you know 1.46 million in debt you know so we've halved almost nearly halved you know the uh, the loan debt in terms of interest payments obviously had we been a little bit quicker with the trigger, we'd have been able to get that money paid in a bit faster and we would have had a lesser payment go out at midnight. But even so, that's pretty good. And you can see the value of our milk going up and up and up. 28000 on Friday, 29900 on Saturday, and 30300 this morning. That's brilliant. So our farm is now looking very, very healthy financially. Uh, and it gives me a little bit of flexibility if I do want to play around with stuff. Um, in terms of maybe bringing in another tractor. I don't know if I really want to do that. I don't know if I need to do that. Um, we don't need to upgrade the combines. We've already upgraded our, our auger. We've brought in a new weeder. Um, brought in a new mixer. I don't think there's anything we really need to spend any money on now. So I think we're just sitting on, gre on, uh, on, gravy sh uh, on the gravy train now. We're just going to ride all the way through to the end of next year. And we should end up with a nice, big, fat profit, I hope. And we still got our soybean to go, don't forget. 330,000 litres of soybean. And if we can get a price better than last year, which hopefully shouldn't be too hard, then we can be clearing three quarters of a million just on the soybean alone in the summer. And that's not counting all the money we're going to make from our orchard through next year. So yeah, we're looking at a very, very healthy profit margin at the end of next year. We are bang on course. So, fantastic stuff. Right, let's start uh, traipsing our way back to the farm, turning in for the night. And then tomorrow will be signage day. So, that's it from me. Thanks for watching. I am Jim Bob, and I'll be back with some more Lone Oak Farm very soon. <laughs>